All right, what about you? All right, I have three questions Ooh. that I've been trying to like get in. But sure. Hopefully, this is my chance. So the first two are, are about like short videos or clips that I've seen. So the first one, you were talking about how like women desire like promiscuous men or like want to share oh. them and stuff like that. Could you first like summarize or clarify your argument um, so I can like get the full scope of it? When I say women desire promiscuous men, what I mean is that women desire men that have the capability of being promiscuous, whether they are or not. So the, the thing is, is that men that are promiscuous have certain tra traits that are unalienable and arousing. They typically don't listen to women. They're typically more dominant. They're, they have leadership qualities. Uh, they're probably in shape. They have charisma. They have charm. They have a bunch of traits that a lot of women would find attractive. So when I say women like promiscuous men, they don't have to necessarily be out here fucking bitches, but they have to pr have to have traits that a promiscuous man would have. So you're not saying that they desire the promiscuity in itself. That could be a component. Um, when women, then they show studies on this. When women, when a man is with women, girls want him more. But also, like a part of the 37 culture study by Dr. David Buss, where he had men and women rate um, 61 characteristics that are conventionally deemed undesirable. Mm -hmm. Women rated promiscuity, sleeps around, and unfaithfulness mm -hmm. um, undesirable in short term and the long term mating. I love that you use that. See, so the thing is, is that. Women typically aren't honest when it comes to self-reporting in that regard, because if a woman admits, I want a guy that runs around and fucks other bitches, that's very unflattering. Women tend to give answers that are more socially appealing. They've shown this too with the study out in Northwestern where they had electrodes attached to a woman's genitals in her finger, and she was supposed to click on what she found attractive versus what her, um, her genitals responded to. Long story short, there was a disconnect versus what a woman said she was attracted to versus what she was actually aroused by. And the reason for that is because women typically have to give politically correct answers to not come off as whores. So they're going to say, I don't want a guy that sleeps around, et cetera. But let's be honest here. If a girl's with a guy, he's attractive, he's, a, he's, he's gotten her, and she finds out after the fact he's fucked a bunch of girls, she probably isn't going to go anywhere. Unless, like, maybe he fucked a friend of hers or some shit like that, and there's some, like, emotional tie where it's like, you fucked my best friend, blah, blah, blah. That might fuck you up. But in general, a man that has the capability of being promiscuous is far more attractive. That's why it's better a lot of times for women to not know. But if they find out on their own, it's different. So you're saying that the data is not correct. Because... Well, it's self-reporting. So and, and women are typically are not honest when it comes to self-reporting, especially when it comes to their sexuality. And there's been studies that show that. But I would believe this study because it's kind of like the whole that study that um, Dr. David Buss did is kind of like the whole like foundation remember, for. Keep yeah. in mind, I said promiscuous traits. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily out here fucking bitches. Some girls will accept that some won't, but men that are promiscuous have traits that are attractive. If the girl knows if he's promiscuous or not is one of two things or is another thing. But then we pivoted to when I asked you about like the promiscuity in and of itself and you brought up like the study with the electrodes and everything. And I do agree with you that women do lie about like what they're attracted to. But I would argue that this doesn't apply to this specific study. They lie about what they're aroused by or aroused by because two different things in this specific study, it kind of like aligns like in general about how like short-term and long-term mating works for men because the whole point of that study was to prove that men have lower criteria in short-term you know mating than absolutely. women absolutely and so it kind of like draws certain connections so and you would accept that part and all the different reasons behind that which is true. So I don't know why you why you wouldn't accept like this specific part about that study. That's well, that, well no, no, no. It's because it's saying that women. Right. If I, if I understand you correctly, you're trying to say here that women, when find when they find out that the man is promiscuous, they don't like him for short term and for long term. Yeah, they find that trait undesirable. Well, in, again, in that, that comes study. to females are typically not honest when it comes to self-reporting. Like, does it is it flattering for a woman to say, yeah, I find promiscuous men super attractive. In short term and long term, no. women typically tend to lean around when it comes to self-reporting, especially when it comes to sexuality. Women are less honest when it comes to reporting things that might make them look socially, you know, wrong. You got to remember that women, women are communitarian by being communitarian. That means you need the community. Right. It's only in modern day times that women have been able to survive on their own without the protection and security of numbers of men. So. And that's still ingrained in women. They still look for a protector, a provider, et cetera. So 
going, I say all that to say this, when a woman answers surveys like that and it shows some type of unflattering reality about her sexuality, they're less likely to be honest, right? And they've shown this, right? If you take the chimpanzee, they took a male chimp, right, by himself. And the chimpanzee is the closest to human beings. By himself, show, showed him to female chimps, weren't interested. They put him with female chimps, the female chimps became interested again. So I mean, we could just bring up Dan Bozarian. His whole life yeah. is multiple women, and women just flock to him because he's Dan Bozarian. Yeah. So pre-selection is very important when it comes to women. So that's why, like that part, I'm like, all right, like that's kind of that's kind of cap, because we know for a fact, like I mean, going to nightclub, I, I think nightclubs are one of the best examples of like social dynamics between men and women that's raw, where all the women concentrated. They're concentrated in the section with the guys that have the highest perceived status in that social situation. They got their, they got the table, they got the girls, they got 20 girls in there and the women are there. So women say, Oh, I don't want a promiscuous guy, etc." but they want a guy that's capable of being promiscuous, whether he is or not. Now, some girls, you're right. Some girls might say, Oh, you know, I found out he fucked a hundred girls. Okay. I'll, I'm not going to be interested anymore. But if the girl has some type of investment in the man and she finds out that he had sex with hundred girls, she's way less likely to leave. Okay. So, all right. so you have some, the, and the, then yes. my, I had two yeah. other questions. Oh, so my sorry. second this question no, but... was um, about how you were talking about it was it was a clip you were saying how like women are like um, they just say like stupid stuff on the podcast and everything. And you were saying how like if you're a beautiful woman, um, men will like pretend to listen to you or yeah. if they do like it's because of your beauty like they'll yeah. tolerate what you have to say and then if you're an ugly woman um men don't really want to care about like what you have to say because they don't find you attractive yeah. so my question is like what type of women or to what type of woman woman do men like listen to or value their intellectual um i guess like Opinion. intellectual thoughts or like i don't want to say well yeah i would say opinion that's like based in logic and if it's none then you know that's would be an honest answer but so, i just want to know like the type so when it comes to female opinions women have to earn the right for their opinion to be valid and what i mean by that is like unfortunately for women one of the things that sucks is the prettier you are as a female the harder you're going to have to work to be taken seriously and i'm sure a lot of you guys may know that if you try to go into the professional world as an attractive woman they're going to assume you're stupid. They're going to assume you're incompetent. And uh, they're going to kind of touch you. You're going to play with you with kid gloves, right? Unless you have a female boss and she's going to hate on you. But uh, a lot of times that's one of the negatives for for females when it comes to your opinion, right? You have to earn the right to have your opinion taken seriously to some degree. Now, when it comes to stupid girls, what I've realized is this is the cor this is the, the graph, the correlation. The hotter the girl is, the more insufferable she can afford to be. I hate to say it like that. That's a very crude way of saying it. But the hotter she is, the more insufferable she can afford to be. But the, you get to a point where the man is going to be at his boiling point, depending on how thirsty he is for sex and how many options he has. The more attractive the man, and typically the less patience they have. So a girl that's insufferable but hot will be able to last longer with a guy that's thirstier and doesn't have as many options. But if she's hot but insufferable and the guy has options and he's attractive, he's going to probably tell her to shut up. And then she's probably going to get turned on by that. So it's a win-win. Well, it's a lose for the guy that tolerates it. But that's typically the relation I've seen with girls that are pretty but annoying. No. Does that answer it? I think yeah, it, it does. It. Those and are my, good questions. And then my third really question questions. is, um, like, for both um, hosts, if you, like, had to choose, like, which um, weighs more than the other, would you want a woman to need you more than she wants or desires you or wants and desires you more than she needs you good question i think the woman needs to need you more and the reason why is because i notice when people need things they behave much better for it for example if you know if you you need oxygen you're gonna put your you're gonna stay your ass on land right you're not gonna be going swimming and doing all kinds of risky shit because you need oxygen to live so i mean that's an extreme example but you get what i'm saying when people need you or when people need something they behave in a better fashion to get what they need. And when it comes to a woman, and here's the thing. The reason why I say this is because in today's day and age, right, we tell women to be empowered. We tell women to be promiscuous. We tell women, fuck men. You don't need men, et cetera. The only way as a man you're really going to be able to make sure you hold the leverage and have the girl attracted and aroused by you is you need to maintain that leverage. You maintain that leverage by her needing you. Um, obviously, I'm not telling you to be a fucking tyrant or be an asshole, et cetera. But when she feels like she needs you, you're going to get the best out of her. 
When she only wants you, she's not going to do everything required to keep you. Because women get very lazy when in relationships a lot of the times, unless she's really with a guy that she loves and admires respects. But if she's with a guy and she's like, I got this nigga, man. She's going to start not giving a fuck, talking to other guys, going to a club. She's going to do a bunch of fuck shit. But when she needs you, she's going to be on her best behavior. And I think that's where women need to be with a man. That's why I always say the girl needs to like you more than you like her. When the, you like the when you like the girl more, that's when this disrespect happens. That's when she starts doing whatever she wants. That's when she starts to wear the pants in a relationship and she loses attraction. I know a lot of girls get mad at me for saying this, but the reality is men have to have leverage Misogyny. in the relationship. When women have leverage, they're terrible people. So that's why I think she needs to need you. If she only wants you, it'll work for a period of time, but she you need she needs to basically feel like she can't live without you. That's when you got you get the best treatment. She's cooking for you. She's giving you sex on demand. She's fucking not being a bitch. She's not being annoying. She's giving you girls when you want to have threesomes and shit. Like that's how you get the best out of your girl. She needs to need you. Not just for financial, but like everything for emotion, stability, leadership roles, uh, your spontaneity, whatever it is. But yeah. What, what about you? She asked you to. I would say both. Um, if you're the guy that is her dream guy, for example, the top tier guy, um, she's going to want you. But needing you, for example, you give her that experience where you're the guy that's going to take her to her first trip to like maybe Dubai or, for example, even to a local activity that she's never been to before. Just you being in her presence is an experience. And I think that, along with you, her wanting you sexually as well, is going to have a great effect. Because once again, the sexual, uh, I want to say, attention is there along with the actual like need for you as the um, guy for an experience and that combines to like a good atmosphere. And I think that alone with those two parameters will give you the best outcome. That's what I would say. All right. <clears throat> then you had something uh, from before. You were going to ask something first. Said you, you yeah, asked I just questions. wanted to see your outlook on um, the relationship between that one only fans model. And um, I can't remember. I think he's in no jumper. The, Oh shit! Out of twenty-two, yeah, I, I, I'm, I just, I mean, I, I feel like I know what you're gonna say, but I think it's funny to hear you rant about people nah, you don't like. Um, <laughs> Adam's a friend, so I'm just gonna say I don't agree with it, but that's it. That's okay. what I'm gonna say. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's it. I mean, I, I had fun. 